All right, before we jump into anything with this video, I want to be very, very clear from the start with a disclaimer. I am in no way saying that Brady Kachuk is available. I am in no way saying that this is going to happen. I am in no way saying, I like all of this, I just want to say strictly hypothetical and hypothetical only in the world that Brady Kachuk is available, in the world that Ottawa would even entertain picking up the phone, and in the event the Rangers are willing to give out the assets to get Brady Kachuk. And in the event they even have the assets to do it, because quite frankly, I don't know if they have the ammo or not. I could honestly say that I maybe am undervaluing what it would cost to get a Brady Kachuk, and I will gladly admit that from the rip. But I am, again, not claiming that this is possible and is going to happen. This is just all for fun. This is all for hypothetical because he's the talk of the town right now of the fact that he would fit the Rangers perfectly because, I don't know, they just got beat by the Florida Panthers who happened to have his brother and that team happened to get better once they acquired Brady's brother. So let's jump into everything. Before we do, leave a like on the video if you do enjoy, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm not even going to waste any more time with the intro. So Brady Kachuk, I don't think I need to introduce you guys to him at all. Uh, I think every single person here, and I know that I say that with every single player pretty much I've done, but I haven't got to the depth players yet, which I'll get to some weird players and people are going to be like, why are you even doing a video on this guy? I'll explain those when those happen. But with a guy like Brady Kachuk, uh, I, I, what is it to say? I mean, he's an elite talent and he's only going to get better because he hasn't even hit his prime yet. I think he's like, what, 25 years old. And this is the thing that makes me really want him more because of the fact that the Rangers have fumbled so much on young talent that are stars in the past where I really do not care. I'm going to say this. I will gladly admit that maybe I undervalued the guys like I mentioned in the intro or undervalued what the trade would take. I'm going to say that pretty much everything's on the table Almost everything. I want to say almost, almost everything is on the table if he becomes available because I am so sick of watching Jack Eichel go win in Vegas. Go, sick of watching a guy like Matthew Kachuk right now winning in Florida because I talked about a potential Matthew Kachuk trade because Kachuk had the Rangers on his trade list of teams he'd be willing to go to. So I'm tired of seeing them fumble young star talent. So if in the event that's possible, swing for the damn fences. But... The guy consistently scores 30 goals, uh, is consistently going to give you 30-plus apples, consistently going to give you that 70-point range. And again, I think he has potential to do more, and I do think that him, unfortunately, being on a bad Ottawa power play does hurt him a bit in terms of the points that he could put up. So throw him on the power play here. He's all of a sudden probably going to jump up to 90, 100 points. I do think that's possible. Then you get to the charts. I, I mean, just... Do I need to say more? Do I need to say more with a guy like, like, come on, come on. And, and oh, the defense, he's not here to play defense. Trade comparables, the closest things that I could find. And I wanted to, there really wasn't anything close, I should say. But the Brinkett went for this much for signing rights. You have a guy like Alex Newhook who went for this much. Time to pump this thing up with some steroids. And I know fans are not going to be happy, again, on, on both sides, because there's going to be people that say overvalue and undervalue. Typically, guys go for less than what fans make it out to be. But the package that I came up with is a guy like Phil Peedle, because cap reasons, uh, cap reasons is like the biggest thing with moving a guy like Phil Peedle. And then Ottawa gets a guy that they could take a flyer on to potentially be a young piece there. And May, who knows? Maybe they get their own little revenge there with Mika Zibanejad and get a guy who is an elite goal scorer down the road, which Zibanejad obviously not looking like a legit one C right now, but maybe they find lightning in a bottle and heat because concussion issues sound familiar with Zibanejad. Yeah, it does. Uh, so they get a guy like that. Ryan Lindgren, there's rumors of Jacob Chikrin being on the trade block. So Ryan Lindgren... You know, give their uh, give the RFA rights there. Still a young, controllable defenseman. They could sign to whatever deal they want. Brian Othman, you have to give up to get. You have to give a top prospect. It's going to be one of Othman or Perot. Take your pick. My pick's Othman. There is a world that it is Gabe Perot, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, and this is not going to be a popular take amongst Ranger fans. I am willing to trade Gabe Perot in this type of deal, and I'm going to explain my reasoning why right now. Because 
I all, do I need to say anything more than Niels Longquist hangover? That's maybe what it is for me. But to me, just get the guy that's the proven talent and the guy that is, he's still young. Like, it's not like you're getting a superstar who's 29, 30 years old. We're talking about a guy that has yet to hit his prime in Brady Kachuk. I'm willing to throw chips in on the table here and move a guy like Gabe Perot and gamble. Gamble a bit, quite frankly, because Gabe Perot could be a superstar in the league for all we know. Thing is, we don't know. We know, though, right now that Brady Kachuk is a superstar in this league. So why not give to get and take the chance there on a guy that's going to help you today and tomorrow because he's locked up long term. And again, a young superstar, Matthew Robertson, you got to give up some prospects still throw a guy like him in. Maybe instead they want a guy like Berard and they want, you know, more forward prospects. I don't know. You obviously have to get up first. I did the 2025 one because I think Ottawa is going to be more interested in getting a first round pick that could be higher up in the draft than 30 and then a third round pick because the Rangers don't have a lot of middle picks and they're going to have to give up a middle pick. Then you get to the lineup and uh, I mean this top six is looking a whole lot better. I still obviously would like them to upgrade at the 1C spot but it's unrealistic. I, I understand. Zabanjad is not going anywhere. Full no move clause. I fully get it. You don't have to comment it. But then you look at the bottom six. Things are shaky. A spot open on the left D, 4.8 million in cap to work with. That's a little, a little tricky. A little tricky, isn't it? Well, I'm glad that you asked who might be playing the top pair left D because let's just put this on steroids even more. Why not throw Jacob Chikrin potentially in the deal? That's going to jack up the price a ton. I completely get it. But you're talking about a guy that is better at moving the puck than pretty much anyone on the decor and a guy that's going to chip in offensively. You'll get the charts a little underwhelming because the guy's been playing on poor teams his entire career. But you look at this. Offense, good. Defense, solid. Solid for the most part. His shorthanded defense, not the greatest. You don't want him killing penalties, ideally. And then you look at the card. There are things that worry me and alarm me, which is why I didn't initially throw him in this deal because... I do have my, like, I am a little skeptical of a guy like Chikrin because he is hurt a good amount. And you look at some of the issues with retrievals and stuff like that and zone exits. Not really retrievals. It's more the exits that are the issues because yeesh with the failed exits. Uh, but, again, there is the world where it's just because he's on the Ottawa Senators. There's a trade comparable. Ranger fans, close your damn eyes because... This is what I got for you. Uh, but again, you have the jacket on steroids because you're getting a you're getting two guys under contract. One is a bona fide top four defenseman, one is a bona fide superstar in the making, if not already a superstar, if you want to consider him one. Two first round picks have to go in the deal, no question. Um, and I pretty much did the same deal, honestly, but just add in a first round pick because Ottawa ended up getting a first round pick for Jacob Chikrin. Uh, last year, or they gave up a first, I meant, for Chickering last year, I believe it was. So, again, you're going to have to give up a first-round pick to get. You could argue Kako has to go in the deal. You could argue X prospect, that prospect. And, again, you could argue Gabe Perot has to be in the deal instead of Othman, and then the trade goes through. Completely fair justification, completely fair argument. The problem is the cap gymnastics that you run into with a roster like this because all of a sudden, your decor... Not looking bad outside of Truba, who, which, again, smell you later if you want to buy him out. There you go. You got some cap flexibility now to address the bottom six, which ideally you'd want to get another bottom six center. I think a guy like Teddy Bluger being the 3C slash 4C, not a bad option there. And you revamp the bottom six a little bit. If you have to move on from a guy like Goudreau, are we all crying? I don't know. I know some people are happy with the way he played this postseason to me. I'm skeptical because is a 40% shooting percentage sustainable? Probably not. Probably not at all, uh, to be honest with you. So, again, that if you wanted to open up more cap, all of a sudden you got 8 million cap to sign a third-line center, to sign a third-line right winger because you'd probably want that ideally because I like Rempe, but I don't know if you want... Like, I think you want ideally him and Edstrom rotating those spots. You sign two forwards here and then a third third pair right shot defensive like that
that is not a bad spot to be in with 8 million in cap. But again, we're talking about a unrealistic world because that's why I said in the beginning. This is fantasy land. This is unrealistic. I know this is not going to happen. And it is just all for fun and hypotheticals because again, talk of the town right now is Brady Kachuk here. So let me know your thoughts. Did I overvalue him? Did I undervalue him? Um, but again, at the end of the day, if you're getting mad over this, then that's a you problem because this is just simply for entertainment and fun purposes because we're breaking down trade targets, free agent targets is what it is here. So if you have any recommendations for targets, let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.